I'm Colin Harris from Nowhere, and this is continuing the series on hooking up SAS and Excel. In this particular video, we're showing the seventh technique of this series, and that is shown in position seven, the SAS Excel Libname Engine. As you can see, there's a whole range of techniques there, 11 di different techniques, and they're covered in the other videos of this series. But this one is focusing on the SAS Excel Libname Engine. Now you may want to refer back to the sixth one on the series that gives a bit of background on the SAS PC file formats because you require that particular product to use the SAS Excel Libname Engine and that previous video display can, uh, explains a little bit more about the PC file formats product and also about whether you may require the PC files server. So I won't repeat that here and we'll get on to talking about the Excel Libname Engine. Now this is one of my favourite techniques as it's very very powerful, it allows you to do a lot of good things so I'll, I'll give you that, uh, that recommendation out of all the techniques this is one really to understand how it works and uh, you'll get a lot of reward from, from actually using it. Right, what does it allow you to do? What is it doing? The SAS Excel engine is, allows you to use Excel as if it was a, a library. As you're aware, a SAS library is typically a folder uh, where you, your different SAS tables exist within that folder, or you may relate it to a database, so it is a database schema, perhaps an oracle, where all the tables within there relate as SAS tables. This is the same concept. You can point to an Excel spreadsheet and say use that Excel spreadsheet as a library. And each of the different worksheets in there can be different SAS tables or SAS members. Bit of a hard concept to come to terms with because you don't think of an Excel spreadsheet that way typically, but that's what it allows you to do. Not only worksheets, but it also allows ranges can be treated as tables. So a range could be just a few rows and columns at the bottom right of a worksheet, and that can be defined as a SAS table. Okay, so what sort of technique is this in terms of who's controlling the interaction? Well, it's very much SAS controlling the interaction. SAS, you're running something from SAS, which pushes out and creates a, a file, and that file then gets picked up by Excel and used in that way. What is it transferring? It's transferring the data. So that's data from a SAS table is being transferred out to the Excel file. It's not output, not procedure output proc tabulate, proc print, whatever. No, that's not being transferred. It's purely a SAS table that is moving out into that Excel file. What's it good for? Well, it's, it's good for creating new Excel files or, or worksheets within a file. But really where it comes into its own is updating pre-formatted Excel spreadsheets. And the advantage with that is, is you can create your spreadsheet, tidy it up, make it as fancy as you would like, including colors, fonts, etc., but also graphs, uh, pivot tables, and other things you'd want of a particular spreadsheet. And you can just update the data portion using the XAS Excel Libname engine, and the rest of the spreadsheet updates automatically, and you've got your nice formatted result still there that you created earlier. Okay, a couple of things you need to bear in mind on how to use this. First of all, how do you assign the Libname to point to that Excel spreadsheet? That's pretty straightforward. You see the libname statement there, libname cars XLS. We use the Excel word to tell it that it's writing to an Excel spreadsheet. And then we point to the actual file that we want to have. In this case, it's simply called c.xls. Once we've done that, we can use that Excel libname just like we could use any other SAS data library. So there's the, a data step down below, data cars.xls. All cars, and we're saying set the data set, the cars data set we're dealing with, and that will write it out and create a worksheet called all underscore cars. Very important, the bottom there is the, to clear the lib name. That frees up the Excel spreadsheet to be available to Excel or other users. Something else that's worthwhile remembering or knowing is you can refer to sheets or ranges, as I said earlier. How you distinguish between the two is that sheets end in a dollar sign and ranges don't end in a dollar sign. That makes it a bit trickier when you're referring to 
a SAS worksheet, sorry, an Excel worksheet um, with a dollar sign on, because as you will probably know, normal SAS naming conventions don't allow you to use a dollar sign. They are starting with a underscore or letter and ending, continuing on with letters, underscores or numbers, not special characters like the dollar. But what a lot of people don't know is you can actually use those special characters for data set names, for variables and so on, but you have to tell SAS in an explicit way that it's using a special character. And how you do that is it's called a named literal. And so you see in the data step here that we are going to create a table called cars underscore sheet one dollar. And to do that we need to enclose it within quotes. You see a left quote and a closing quote and then use the character N following that. That is telling SAS that this is a named literal and you can use special characters, even blanks, within there. So you can, can use SAS names or SAS variables with blanks and special characters. I wouldn't recommend it for normal use, but where you are writing out to an Excel spreadsheet, yes, it is uh, acceptable to do that. So this one, because it's got a dollar in it, that's creating a worksheet. Down the bottom there, if we're creating one without a dollar sign, it's creating a range. Now some people get a bit confused if you go into one of the library windows and look at this particular library, you'll see two entries for each worksheet. By default, SAS creates has a range available for each worksheet. So if you have a worksheet called Fred, you will see Fred Dollar is the name of the worksheet within that library. And then there'll be one called Fred, which is actually the range. And that range is the same as the actual full worksheet, it's just that it's known as a range rather than the worksheet. Alright, so um, how would we go about creating a nice pretty Excel file that we want to put in a particular form that, that is really nice for our customers uh, and then update that with the data on an ongoing basis without having to recreate that. Well here's the five steps that you'd go through to do that. You'd create your nice template within Excel, so just go into Excel, create a spreadsheet as you would like with the graphs, uh, pivot tables, etc. You would then define where that data is coming from within the Excel spreadsheet, define that as a range, and then what we're going to do later is update that range whenever we need to update the data from within SAS. So the third thing then, do whatever processing we need to do from the data side. This is a job that might be run every night or every week, so it would run through, pull the data it needs from wherever, process it into the shape that is required to fit into that range. And then step four is we use the Excel libname engine to update that particular range in Excel. And then the fifth step is automatic. It means any of the other parts of the spreadsheet, other formatted parts of the spreadsheet, graphs, etc. will automatically update and you'll have your nice updated and formatted Excel spreadsheet ready to pass on to your users. A little trick about using ranges, you must delete it first. It seems a bit odd, but that's just the way that you need to do it. So how do you delete the range? It doesn't physically delete it from within the spreadsheet, it just deletes that definition from SAS and therefore allows SAS when you say I want to create this range to, to rewrite that range back into the Excel spreadsheet. So how we delete it is use prop data sets, the library is that cars XLS example we were using, and then delete the appropriate range name. Now we can use the data step or whatever procedure to update that range. Okay, so here, there's an example of a pre-formatted Excel spreadsheet where we've sent some updated information. This, of course, is an example of a pivot, pivot table, and you can see we've got a nice title up the top and appropriate fonts and colours, and the rest of the pivot table is there on that car's data. And we've simply updated some data in another part of the spreadsheet that this pivot table actually reads from. Okay, so what's the advantages of this particular technique? Advanced customization. You can create whatever spreadsheet you like in terms of whatever formatting and just feed in that data via a range. Now it might seem a bit odd, but Excel isn't needed for when you update a table or update a file or create a new file. Of course you would have to supply, say you're doing this on a, uh, on a Unix machine for instance, you would have to move up that Excel spreadsheet into that environment to make it available to the environment. But Excel is not needed on that particular 
SAS processing environment when you actually run it. We haven't talked about DDE yet, but uh, DDE is a historic technique that a number of people do to allow advanced customization, and it should really be being replaced in these days. This is a very good option for you to replace DDE type work if you have that uh, still in use in your organization. What's the downside? You can't create formatting in a programmatic way. Of course, as I've explained to you, you can go in and simply create the Excel spreadsheet and uh, in, the, in whatever formatted way you want, and that's great, but that's just doing one spreadsheet. If we want to do, say, a thousand spreadsheets, that's where that Excel XP option that we discussed in an earlier part of the series is much better than this technique for, for doing that if you want to create a whole host of spreadsheets that are, that are formatted in a particular way. Second point is just a point of usage really rather than a real real con but it's just a matter of knowing how to deal with ranges. You can't overwrite the range, you have to delete it and recreate it in SAS and then that will write it out to the appropriate location. All right, last slide for this one. What do we need to use this particular technique? Base SAS, of course, but we also need the product PC file formats, or full name, SAS access to PC file formats. As part of that, you may need to get a PC file server set up, but that depends on your environment. You need to be at least SAS 9. This doesn't work for previous versions of SAS than that. Thanks for watching this video, which is part of a series on hooking up SAS in Excel. The full PowerPoint presentation is available at nowhere.co.nz, which includes references to good papers that provide more details.